Welcome to today's tutorial where we're going to learn a little bit about photo correction. Um, here I've opened two photographs in a Photoshop, one of the photo that we're going to be correcting and one of a fireplace. I'm going to use this fireplace just to show you a quick trick that you might want to use um, and that's an adjustment. So if we go up to image and adjustments you go down to the bottom, you'll see something that says match color. A window will pop up. If you select our fire image, which comes from Getty Images, you'll see that it changes him to look like the fire. It has the same tones and highlights. But you can further adjust that here with the fade and the color intensity. We can bring it down a little bit. You'll see that it just really tones it out nicely. So we'll go up and look and see what we had original with the color match. And we're going to start with some basic corrections. And for color correction, some of the simplest things to do is go up to image. You can auto contrast. It looks good. We'll keep that. And these are trial and error because they don't always work the same on every picture. You can go to auto tone. That looks okay. It adds a little bit more blue to it makes the skin look a little bit more realistic. You can go to image, auto color. Well, that doesn't look so good. It looks really blue. And we can undo that over here. The next thing we're going to work on is this hair that has, you know, come through his chest here and a little bit right here under his chin. So we're going to remove those. You see he's got a tattooed chest. So we're going to make this kind of blend. I'm going to zoom in real quick on it right here so that we can get it a little bit better look here. And I'm going to go up here to the, where the little band-aid is and we're going to use the first one which is the spot healing tool brush. And if you just click over it, we'll kind of blend in. You may have to click it a couple of times to get a good blend. And you can see for the most part now it blends with the rest of the tattoo. It's really not all that noticeable now. With this hair under his chin, for this one you're going to see it it doesn't quite look right. Could try the healing brush tool. With this one you'll select a patch of skin that you want to copy by holding down your alt key. It becomes a target or a bullseye. Click and you can bring that over. You may only get a little bit of it covered this way. Um, only about half because then it's going to start doing that blur thing again. We're going to fix the rest of that in using the liquify tool. And I find that that's up under your filter. So if you go to filter and you'll come down to liquify. Liquify opens up another window here. We're going to zoom in so that we can see what we're doing a little bit here. I'm going to first start by fixing the chin. We want a nice smooth chin because, in, you know, on real people, you don't have all these jagged edges like this and this or this over here. To do that, we're going to use this push or the forward warp tool. It looks like a finger pushing. And we're going to need a little bit smaller brush than this. So we bring our brush down. There we go. About a 16 here. And you just grab around it and kind of push up. And that'll kind of smooth it out there for us. Once you're pretty satisfied with the way it looks, We'll move on to this piece down here where the hair is sticking out. For this, we're going to use this mask tool. It's the freeze mask tool, and what that does, it allows you to paint. We're just going to kind of paint around the chin because we don't want to bother that. We just want to um, push this other bit up into it. So we're going to mask out the things we don't want to bother. Once you have it masked, we're going to come out to the top to that finger, the forward warp tool again, and just push this skin up into his chin. When you're done with that, you can come to the eraser tool, which is the thaw mask. It's just a brush. You just swipe it over and it erases that red and the hair is gone. Now you can also use this same technique along this shirt line here. And I'll show you a little bit up here at the top. You see there's a bit here that's sticking out. It just doesn't look right. So 
So we can mask up here and use our finger tool to just kind of push it in, make it look sharper. Once you get that, you can come back and erase. See the line there as compared to down here, it's a lot crisper. Once you're pretty satisfied with what you've done um, with all your liquify tool and you feel that it's a good a good look, you can just click OK and you'll see that it's been applied to the rest of the photograph here. And that's fixed. But now we need to do something um, with his hair. It just doesn't look natural. So we're going to add a little bit of blur to that with our blur tool here. And nice big fat brush. And just kind of gently rub over it. I have it set at 50% for the strength, and you can adjust that depending on your preferences, what you like. Now we're just going to add a little bit of shadow, and I'm going to do that by using my Dodge and Burn tool. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key and click this new layer icon here. A little box will pop up, and I'm going to go to Overlay. And when you do that, this box here will come up, Fill Overlay with Neutral Color. Check that box, click OK. It's going to make um, a new layer. I'm going to add two of those, so I'm going to Command J and copy that layer. So I've now got two. I'm going to use one for dodge and one for burn. This way, if I don't like it, I can undo it. I don't have to worry, you know, have both on one layer. So I'm going to start here and start with my burn tool. I just I always like to burn first and then I'll dodge second. With this, um, I have the exposure set around 55%. I'm just going to kind of outline him. Makes a little bit of a shadow back here. It looks like the light's hitting him from the face, so you would have more natural shadow back here. Um, you might want to adjust your brush size and add shadow other places. I'm going to adjust it down. About, um, we'll go to 100 here. And just you would have some natural shadow under the jawline here. So add a little bit there. Um, maybe a little dot right under the chin or under the bottom lip, under the nose. Places that you would have a shadow of the eyes perhaps. Okay, once you have that done you can come up to layer one and again hold your mouse down, click on the dodge tool. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger here. Let's go 65. There we go. And we can add some natural highlights where you would have some, maybe a little bit here on the hair. I don't have somewhere the light is hitting him here in the front. When you're done with that, you can merge these layers into one layer. You don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could just click here and merge visible, and you will have it all in one layer. And back up to the top, you can see how far we've come here to here. That's a pretty big difference, and you can further adjust if you wish. On your adjustments panel here, you can change the contrast a little bit. And these all pop up on non-destructive layers in CS4. So if you wanted to adjust the contrast, you could. If you wanted to um, add some vibrance to it, you can do that. If you want to adjust the curves. And I like to adjust the curves with this little finger here. That way I have more control. I can push where I want to push at, can pull where I want to pull at, make it darker, make it lighter. You can adjust that all over just by using your mouth. You're done. You have come from here where we started to here. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Come back for another exciting tutorial tomorrow.